Mr. Fez? Yeah. So, would you be able to see my slide? Hello? It is visible, sir. Okay, all right. Very good morning, one and all person here. Thank you very much for your kind introduction about me. And it's my pleasure and privilege to be part of this event. And of course, in today's top topic, which would be on tissue engineering and a hope for donor substitute. So I designed my slide in such a way that, that the fundamental importance of tissue engineering will be known to the students because they are young minds at the moment. So when they have a future career, especially they want to pursue in tissue engineering, which is one of the uh, future and uh, you know the most booming uh, field. All right, so I designed in such a way very simple and very fundamental informations, which definitely it will be useful for the students to to pursue their research career if they are interested in. OK, so of course, with that, a little bit of introduction, why do we need a, you know, organ donations? As you can see that, so this is just a statistical information, rough information, which I've extracted from the Google. You can see almost uh, this, even though the information is, is a bit old, but still it is relevant. So as you can see, every year, the four lakhs people are dying because of insufficient or unavailability of the organs. OK, perhaps the nature of the organs could vary from person to person. Of course, that is, the reason could be very many, maybe from could be a genetic disorder or could be from accident or trauma or, you know, or the or due to the age. OK, or any specific genetic diseases that many, many diseases contribute for the requirement of organs. But at the moment, we we every year, as you can see, the numbers of requirements of patients, depending on the donor, is keep on increasing. But. But the donor is keep reducing it. All right. So as you can see, the many folds are keeping trending increases, even though as the last two years, we have a good news about there is a good amount of awareness spread among the among, among the among the peoples who are willing to donate it have to especially for any brain drives and other uh, you know the unpleasant incident happen so they are quite that mainly due to the education and awareness created by the respective countries so which is a good which is a good sign so i i don't want to restrict particularly to the india it is also applicable all for all over the world but uh, when compared to other 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 parts of the world they have certain mode of uh, you know the the information and awareness but we do have a lot of populations but accordingly our requirement of organ is also going to be higher all right so in that case this is as you can see that there is every year there will be a tremendous increase of the organ the people are depending on the organ all right so in 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 line with that so is there any opportunity or oh, as you see, as you can see that if anybody wants an organ, it should be dependent on others, isn't it? But of course, not. There are certain conditions. So it depends on the organ. The people can donate, even our own sibling. Of course, if any organs which is quite good functioning, and also still there is a stigma on in our society. So the requirement is keep on increasing in every year, but the amount of receiver, you know, the amount of donor is going to be, it's not capturing the requirement at the moment. Mm -hmm. So in conjunction with that. There is a field called regenerative medicine where the ultimate aim is to regenerate an organ artificially in X, in X, whatever condition and can be transplanted into the person. So in some extent, if an organ can be developed, it, so which can fulfill the requirement, if not, if not cater everybody, but at least it can give you know, support for the dependency on the organ donations. So uh, it's not a new term, as you can see, the regenerative medicine is not a new term. It's there in 1970s. You can't believe that, isn't it? So it's there since 1970s, but every decade it keep on improve its advancement of technology. It keep on increasing, uh, you know, advancement and and we reach certain stage at the moment. Uh, at least at least, you know, uh, we had a good embark or good hope on the tissue engineering where in future certainly we're going to replace there a complete organ which no longer dependency on any other person okay so it is nothing but as you can see the tissue engineering is a part of the uh, regenerative medicine in in most of the textbooks sometimes they interchangeably use the term so one of the element of the regenerative medicine 
is going to be a tissue engineering. As the name sounds, tissue engineering, which means you're going to engineer the tissue artificially. So what do you need for that artificial regeneration? You need three elements. We're going to see in the next slide. So when you look at the component, the curriculum of that particular tissue engineering field, it is a combination of an engineering field and biological field. So ultimately, it is going to help for the development of the organ and either to partially replace or fully replace or improve the function of the organ. So that is the main objective of it. So as you can see here, the tissue engineering triad. So the tissue engineering triad is nothing but tri means three, isn't it? So the entire concept depends on the three important elements. The first one is going to be a cell. So obviously, without cells, nothing is possible. It's the fundamental unit of life. So the cell, another one is going to be the biomaterial, and third one is going to be the signaling molecules. Okay, so this is very important, especially when you anything have your cells externally, you need some stimulus to retain it to especially for differentiation purpose. If you want to differentiate into, you know, uh, chondrocyte cells or, you know, bone or osteocyte cells or skin cells or heart cell, myocytes, whatever it is. So the signaling molecule is an important factor, one among the triad, which is going to be helpful for the differentiating the cells into the particular type of cells. This is a simple schematic representation for better understanding. So again, this is another schematic and uh, presentation of uh, tissue engineering. How does it work? It is going to be the quite similar. You might have encountered about um, animal tissue cultures or cell tissue culture. Even I, I've gone through your curriculum, which is there some extent of studies on animal tissue culture. So, um, which is quite com which is the mechanism is quite be the same. The principle is going to be the same. So you're going to ultimately going to depend on tissue culture work. So what what extra mighty is going to be involved in this in the session is going to be then a scaffold. Scaffold is nothing but it's an extra element. It gives a three 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 dimensional support, especially to give a cells to spread on the on the scaffold material to grow on it. So once you grow on it, of course, it will give a shape and architecture for that construct that which can be transplanted into the patient. Okay, so it. The image looks sound. Oh, you're going to harvest it and, and culture it and transfer it and put it back. But there are lots of practical difficulties which stops for us moving forward since three or four decades ago. So anyway, so due, due to the fundamental sound knowledge developing every year, so the improvement of application is, is you know, is quite vast at the moment. So still a lot of research is going on. So certainly there is no doubt in one day there will be a complete, you know, the reorganization or complete generation of an organ ex you know, externally. OK, some of the uh, pictures I posted here, which is um, which is artificial synthesis from from the renowned publications. So as you can see that um, this is just a bladder, which is which is artificially synthesized. And this is a trachea. As you can see, there's another one which is um, hard, which is which is which is again crafted by 3D printing technology. Another one, earlobe, earlobe. And as you can see, there's another truck here. This is also artificially synthesized. You can't believe you don't have to depend on any donor to wait. Nobody, nobody, nobody's going to donate it if they are alive, isn't it? So there are, uh, there are plenty of opportunities with the help of the tissue engineering to regenerate an organ. The finally, you can look at that. It could be like a candy, doesn't it? So it's not a candy. It is a kidney. So uh, one of the reputed uh, university from uh, from United States, they've developed this. And uh, so you can see there, you can see there, there is a secretion of, uh, you know, separation of urine components. So they tried it. It's, still, it's, 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 uh, it's a model, but it gives a hope that there will be a possibility of complete regeneration of uh, kidney. All right, so with the, let's look at the cells. What are the cells? As I said, in the triad, the, one of the important components is going to be the cells. This is the first element of the triad. So cell is the fundamental, you know, fundamental uh, unit of our living being or fundamental unit of our, any tissues, isn't it? So the t cells is important. So obviously the cell, the choice of the cells is purely depend on the type of organ which you want to, de want to develop. So I've listed here, as you can see, the fibroblasts, as everybody knows about it, it is quite responsible for the generation of skin. Similarly, if you want to regenerate a bone, osteocytes, and if you want to do for the chondros, uh, you know, the cartilage material, which is the chondrocytes, and of course, my, and proportionally, you can see myocytes for heart, okay, and adipocytes for fat tissues and other stuff. 
So obviously the type of cells which you're going to which you're going to you know generate it is very very important. Okay, so let's move on to this. What are the types of cells which is currently been used in tissue engineering? As I've listed here, this could be fundamental, but it's very, very important. So the first one is going to be autologous. Auto means, as you know, self, isn't it? Everybody knows about it. So same person. For instance, if I, if I, I feel that uh, I, I can donate, I mean, I can take a portion of a skin and can be preserved for quite some time, and it can be recycled. As you can see, even nowadays, the stem cells, when, when, when a baby born, there are uh, nowadays the technology is a bit advanced. They can also take up their own umbilical card. The stem cells they can preserve for, you know, many years, for uh, perhaps more than 20 or 30 years. So that if the same person undergoes some specific diseases, that similar same person's stem cells can be utilized for the regeneration. That's a quite example. Similarly, so any any tissues which is taken out from the same person can be harvested. Uh, can be you know organized or developed externally and then it can be transplanted later so another one is going to be allergenic allergenic from same species which mean i get an organ from a different person okay so get a donor uh, maybe a, a a sample of a biopsy of uh, cells or tissues you can uh, you can you know proliferate it and with the help of the tissue engineering you can develop it and you can transplant it Right, that's called allergenic, which is from same person. It means same species from other person. Xenogenic means, of course, different species, perhaps maybe from animals. Okay, if dependence, though, you need to do that. Isogenic means this is it is iso means same. Of course, it's going to be a twin brothers or twin sisters. Right, so the most probably the organs cells will be more compatible and uh, you know uh, compatible and convenient for the cells to be proliferate without any or the limit or minimum rejection of. Uh, cells and primary cells as you see this is one of the technique was normally if you take a cells or an organ or tissue just mince it and extract it so the moment when you get the first culture of uh, cell we call it as primary cells which which inherent the property of the organ so which could be beneficial right so secondary cells of course secondary cells when you passage few times Okay, so when you keep on passaging so that you no longer every time depend on a primary cells. You know, you no longer take a biopsy every time from a person and store it for the purpose. In that case, you can keep passaging and proliferating and keep preserving. So whenever you want, you can take that. Okay, so that's called secondary cells. And stem cells. Stem cells is one of the most boom for our tissue engineering applications. You could have seen many advertisements, even from the umbilical um, umbilical cord of stem cells preservation, especially during the delivery, and even many cosmeceuticals, so they come up with that, but the, vali the validity of the information is still uh, to be ascertained, but there are a good amount of outcomes that's already, uh, already been there for the stem cell treatment, especially for the regeneration or malfunction or, or, or the re uh, a revival of the malfunction of a organ. It could be either completely or partially, all right? Another one, this is a schematic representation, as you can see on, on your right top. So this is a stem cell, as you everybody knows, stem cells is a cells which can differentiate into any type of cells. So based on the signaling molecules. As based on the potency, it has been further classified as multiple multipotent and a pluripotent. As you can see from the multiple multipotent, there are neural stem cells and MSEs and HSEs and other stuff, which, which is quite this is another ocean of information. You can you can go through it. A lot of applications which currently is going on in a regenerative medicine. So let's move on to the pluripotent stem cells. Pluripotent means it can able to you know generate any type of cells, which is a naive cell, which has ability to any type of cells. So basically, uh, embryonic stem cells. Embryonic stem cells are is, is is you know the boom again. It's a boom for the regenerative medicine. As you can see, I also already mentioned umbilical cord stem cells. Another you know, the most advanced and the most, uh, you know, um, most preferred and most advanced. And it's currently is being used most of the research for the umbilical cord stem cells because most of the same cells, the resources they want to from the same person and can be more beneficial. And of course, it is going to be a very naive and it can be triggered and differentiated into any form of cells in, in later. 
Indian blue pattern stem cells, another one. This is which is currently a very hot topic. As you can see, most um, majority of the genetic diseases, which is effectively, you know, is, is effectively can be treated by the iPSC. There's a lot of research is going on. Even some uh, of the clinical trials is also are underwent for one of the uh, genetic diseases. One of the reasons uh, of, of one of the conference which I've attended, which really as worthful information that IPS, IPSCs are the next uh, upcoming uh, boom or you know, reliable source of our organ replacements. Okay, this is another one which is a simple schematic representation as you can see, but as we also, as I mentioned already, it may sound simple. You can just take out and mince it and just uh, passage it and store it, but Behind that, there's a lot of science is going on. Okay, as I mentioned in the briefing slide, I told you it's there since from 1970s, but it's picked up in only 1980s, isn't it? So almost when you look at it, it's almost more than nearly four decades. So by now, we might have completely regenerated an organ, isn't it? But the thing is, there's a lot of hidden science behind it. Our physiology, our physiology is also one of the most complex system to be understand. Okay, so, so of course, each and every stage, every decade, we have a very good improvement, and we be still we long, if not a long way, at least we some extent of way to be proceeded further to get complete achievements. So this is just a representation, as you can see, this is for embryonic stem cells from you know from the cells, and this is just for different source of cells. If you want a brain cells, neuron cells, preferably primary cells, you just harvest the organ. And of course, do the procedure to lyse it and extract your cells and just cultivate it. So this is okay. Let us move on to the second element of a triad, which is a scaffold material. Okay, so this is itself a different field. The scaffold, as you can see, in a simple way of understanding, what do you mean by scaffold? Scaffold is nothing but a simple any structure which gives a support. I give you an example. If you want to construct a building. As you all know, what they first they do it, they construct the scaffold first. Scaffold is, an, is nothing but in Tamil we call it as charam, charam, right? So the people will stand on it and sit on it and to construct to construct a building, isn't it? So over a period of time, when you erect it, when you construct it, the building obviously you need to remove the scaffold, isn't it? So you it, there is no point of keep retaining the scaffold even after you construct your building. So it doesn't fulfill the requirement. So upon completion, it should be shed off, isn't it? So the same material here, the same principle here. Scaffold is a supporting material in which the cells will seed it and will grow on it, proliferate it, and over a period of time, it should be you know degraded by itself. So the degrade, if when it gets degraded, there will be a void space will be generated, isn't it? But ultimately, that will be fulfilled by the cells as well as the extracellular matrix, which is secreted by the cells. So it is one of, that's what it is, one of the important elements in the tertiary engineering triad. So ultimately it needs to, as you can see that, it should it should be conducive, it should give a conducive environment, okay, and it should uh, it should allow the cells to proliferate it. And and it should it should be have proper mechanical property, very, very important. Eh? The, the mechanical property decides and defines the usage of the of your of your scaffold. All right, or, or, and also it will define efficiency of a product. Okay, so just so some of the, um, and of course, it should be less immunogenic if it is good to have less immunogenic, uh, because we can't, in, in nature, we can't assure that any forest, we can't assure that uh, our immune system cannot detect it. So even though we claim it is immunogenic, it is non immunogenic, but there are certain extent of immunogenic will be there. So it is good if we have complete devoid of immunogenic reaction. If not, it's a minimum reaction is required. OK, so that's uh, one of the fulfillments for the scaffold material. I've given here, as I mentioned before, these are the scaffold material which can be molded according to our requirement. As you can see, this picture, which uh, is quite due to the bone head. OK, so it's a thigh bone head. So it was molded to the shape of of, of the bone, so the cells will be seated on it, cells will grow on it, and 
over a period of time, this material, you know, this material is slowly go off. So this is completely re replaced by the mineralization process by the osteocytes. Okay, so this is, but for always you know that there will be a quite long time it will take, maybe sometimes it may take six months and even more than that for to completely replace that. But certainly one day it will does. And so as I said, I already highlighted again, it should be biocompatible, which means it should be friendly to that. And there should not be any immunogenic reaction. It's called biocompatible, compatible with your system. And biodegradability, so over a period of time, it should degrade and get it off. Mechanical property again, so it should be proper mechanical property. For instance, if you use a scaffold for a bone and you know cartilage, there must be a certain amount of strength. Mechanical strength is needed. For instance, if you want to regenerate a cartilage, there must be a flexibility is needed. Where in case if you want to do it for a bone, there will be hardness is needed. If you if you're using for the scaffold materials for your skin, there must be a, you know elasticity is needed. So obviously, it's based upon your type of requirement, the choice of the biomaterial should be choosing it. Okay. All right, um, let's move on to the next one. Again, this is a biomaterial. This is a general term, biomaterial, as you can see. Any material which can interact with our biological system, we call it as biomaterials. Okay, so um, this, again, it's a part of the biomaterials are important elements for, for help us to define or architect the scaffold. It is a large field, it's a large field. It is a separate field where a low ocean of information of choice of biomaterials are there. All right, so this is just for simple understanding the current, uh, you know, the classification of uh, biomaterials. Basically, it's been divided into two major types, which is natural sources and synthetic sources. And there are now there are some semi-synthetic and ceramic sources also available, and which is which is also effectively used in different types of tissue engineering process. Out of this, natural and synthetic, they have both pros and cons. Okay, let's see about it. So the natural problem is, as I can say, I've given a, quote an example, is a collagen, which is uh, one of the most abundantly used protein, present uh, one of the abundantly used protein in the tissue engineering application, almost is 30% of a body is can consist of collagen. Okay, so um, natural problem is, because it's one of the most abundantly utilized in tissue engineering applications because of various properties. Okay, so especially the less immunogenic and easy degradable and, and also is biocompatible, less immunogenic. Okay, and it can be moldable and very, very various of applications on pros of the collagen. And of course, it has its own limitations. As I mentioned, why do we need the nature? As I said, anything which comes from the natural origin, of course, there will be certain levels of compatibility with our physiological system. So any foreign substances, completely foreign substances, then there will be chances of rejection, isn't it? So the main preference is go for the natural origin. Um, as you can see, collagen, which is present, 30% of the collagen which is present in our body. So which is abundantly used biomaterials in the tissue engineering application. As you all know, this is this is this is a triple helix structures, and of course, uh, our, our state is quite familiar for the collagen invention of triple helix, which is done, which was invented late in our you know in our chain, in CLRA directed. So uh, as you can see, there's the different types, and again, so the most abundantly types, as you can see, 28 types. The most abundantly used types would be one, two, three, and five and ten. So most importantly, the Type two, which is mainly used for for the applications of you know, bone and uh, hardness, heart tissue engineering related work. And as you, as you can see, it has a good porosity. Porosity, why do we need a porosity? Porosity means porous. It must have a porous because the porous will assist the cell to migrate in depth of the scaffold, as well as it will also permeate the nutrients which you are supplying through the medium. It will permeate through the porous and reaches the cells. So the cell will consume mm. the nutrition and will grow on it. Next one is going to be the biodegradability. As I mentioned, over a period of time, it should be degrade and should be, you know, disappear. Com compatibility, it should not cause any immunogenic reactions. So it is, it is, it possesses almost every, uh, you know, requirements of tissue engineering. But one limitation is a uh, poor mechanical properties. So 
in order to get rid of that, so maybe we need to use in combinations. Let's see another examples of natural, which is also abundantly used, which is a type of a polysaccharide. The chitosans, which you can see that, which is mainly obtained from the hard part of uh, uh, you know, the animals. So the chitosans, which is hard, uh, as you can see, uh, which is the second uh, abundantly available polysaccharide. The first is the cellulose, which is also which is also enormously used in tissue engineering application due to its the good efficiency of the mechanical property. Okay, so uh, as I enlisted here, another example is going to be polyhydroxy acid, uh, which is just synthetic. There's a lot of synthetic materials already available, but I just quote an, one example. So PLGA and PGA, polyglycolate and glycolic acids. Okay, so they also use in terms of combinations where which is it has its own advantages. For instance, the beauty of this synthetic materials are you can mold the shape as you can, and also you can you can define the oddness. And of course, there are synthetic materials which can be which can be you know biocompatible, less immunogenic, and and it can be bi biodegradable property as well. So uh, those are the days we only depends on the natural source. But nowadays we can have a good combinations of synthetic and semi-synthetic and also natural combination could help to, to achieve our focus. Okay, as I highlighted before, this is a composite. Composite nothing but a combination. So when you use this individual polymers, they might have its own pros and own cons. So in order to address the requirement of our object, so we need to have multi-dimensional properties. So that multi-dimensional properties can be achieved with the combination of different materials. As you can see that nowadays, not only the related tissue engineering, any type. So always they try to even for preservatives when you take, when you do it in a combinations, the efficiency will be more. So similarly here, when you for apply for the tissue engineering, you need to look for various parameters. As I mentioned, biodegradability, biocompatibility, bio and uh, less immunogenic and a mechanical property. So Ultimately, if everything is fine, but if it is not able to mold it, then there's a problem, isn't it? There will be a hindrance for us. So now the semi synthetic and semi-synthetic material gives a way for us to proceed the way what we expected. Okay, this is one of my paper, which is published way back in 2013, which is just a combination of collagen and chitosan scaffold. And with the help of the aloe vera, as you all know, the aloe vera, which is quite commonly used for most of the cosmeceutical purposes, and also in, in a traditional medicine, which has also been used due to its uh, very an antioxidant properties, and it has, and also it has n numbers of applications. So I've tried it, we've tried it, and and uh, and successfully we have seen it uh, quite uh, good results, uh, promising results, where the presence of aloe vera could promote the uh, the growth of cells and also it, uh, it it increased the penetration of the cells inside us in depth of the scaffold. So this is another paper of mine which I haven't published yet. So uh, it's in the communication yet. So this is just for cartilage tissue engineering. I've used certain amount of the similar way the, of collagen and chitosan. Um, and I've used for the trial, I've used for the generation of cartilage material. I say, and I've, I've used the type 2 collagens for the development of the scaffolds. Just, I've used the primary chondrocytes, which I've harvested from the rat chondrocytes. So after seeding it, after three months, we have seen it's, it's a, there will be a transition of, you know, the cartilage development. And which is also, we have, with an evidence of, a uh, scanning electron microscope, you can see the uh, noticeable structures of the cart cartilage or chondrocyte is going to be a spherical shape. As we have observed it, it retained its shape. As we have used the primary cells, perhaps, you know, over a period of time due to the external factors, it may lose its inherent property. But success, as you, when you see that, it, it, it retained its, uh, you know, important property of its shapeness. This is phys physiological or you know, morphological structures. And we also see some of the confocal structures, images, which you can see the depth of penetration where the cells is, though we see it at the top, but the penetration we can able to see, you know, this is just, we have taken, uh, I think around a fourth week. Okay, so you can see that it's a good amount of penetration in the presence of, you know, aloe vera, which you can see that. And also we can confirm with the, some of the specific markers, uh, particularly for, a, you know, cartilage, which is collagen markers, 
and aggregate markers. So as we can see, it is quite predominant in the type two, um, uh, type two collagen secretions. Um, as you can see, um, it is also further confirmed by the, you know, the specific immunological, immuno, immunohistolo, immunohistochemistry studies by uh, specific markers. So, which is, shows that there is a secretion of extracellular matrix, which is rich in type 2 collagen. Okay, let's take an, another example of this is uh, adop adopted from one of the journal, uh, where as everybody knows the hydrogels. So, especially in the pharmaceutical field, we use the hydrogels for drug delivery, isn't it? So, it is one of the most efficient and most uh, solid and uh, reliable uh, in a delivery system. So, which also the same, which also can be used for seeding the cells. So, which can load the cells inside. So, by using the same method by calcium chloride method, just you can encapsulate the cells both in hydrogel and you can cultivate it. There are also studies also been reported, which the beads can be administered at the site, and over a period of time, the cells can be, you know, reach that particular chondrocyte area, and slowly the alginate will be will be degenerating. So ultimately, it's going to be a delivering the cells. Okay. Okay, so this I've just enlisted here the list of techniques to fabricate the scaffold. As I said, biomaterial is an important element. Of course, you need to fabricate it. You need to make a shape which you want it. So that is going to be the ultimate utility of the, the technique. So there are plenty of methods out there. You can see very simple method, solvent casting method, gas forming method. When you keep going on at the, at, at the few last three methods, which is electrospinning method, especially the bioprinting, uh, CAD CAM method, this is quite advanced, which is which gives a room for us to design or architecture the shape of the, you know, the scaffold, which is going to be the boom for us and give a hope for us for the development of an organ. Okay, this is another uh, representation, as you can see, there's a lot of publication, even though it's, it's, it's quite an old one, but you can see there's a lot of different different methods. They've used different different applications just for extra information. I put it here. And uh, let's move on to the, the 3D bioprinting. I'm going to give a hint as also you already had a talk, I think, on 27th. I've seen your videos. So they also given a talk on bioprinting. Yes, this is also another emerging field. And similar to the tissue engineering, it is way back started in 1984. It's not a new term. We might have heard it's a new term, but it's not a new term, but it's there from sim. 1984. So every decade that will keep on that due to the technology and science improvement, it is now it has come to the stage where it can able to mold the complex structure of an organ. Um, as you can see, yellow, these are the simple, uh, you know, the scaffold materials, but still it has own shape and architecture. This is very, very important, especially when you go for applications. Still, and it is again, as I said, even though it's old, but still it is a hot topic. In in future, this is the hope where it's going to give a complete regeneration of organ. But one of the current limitations of the bioprinting uh, can be uh, addressable is maybe you can for other other methods you may you know, architecture the compounds or architecture the organs which may not have a complex structure. A simple structure can be done in, but what happens if it's a complex structure, especially the heart? As you, as you can see, it is a multiple. So when you do the slice of the heart, you can see the, how complex it is. It's very difficult even to understand, isn't it? So this, when you develop a complex organ with the help of the bioprinting, that is a success. But still, we long way to go. But the bioprinting is give a hope for us. There will be a possibility in future to generate a complex organ for the regeneration. Okay, let's, uh, maybe I would like to touch upon about the perfusion and decellularization. This is another method uh, of, you know, to getting a scaffold. Okay, so as you know, uh, we have seen the different techniques, as I also mentioned, one of the CAD, CAM technique we can use to structure the complex organs. But again, we haven't achieved a complete, a complete, uh, you know, a complex organ molding happens in 3D printing. It's still, long, still a way to go. But here, meanwhile, is there any alternative we can address that? Yes. So <laughs> even though it is not the new one, it's also there is quite some time, but it gives another hope, another dimension of hope 
for this scaffold generation, which leads to the organ regeneration. So as you can see, the first one is going to be the heart, where it is extracted from the cadaver, a, a person who died it, so that you just remove it. That's called decellularization. So you're going to remove it by perfusion technique or by you know some chemical uh, chemical assay method. You can flush out the, the dead cells. So when you do it, finally you end up with only the cells. It's called decellularize a heart where there is no cells at all, only the extracellular matrix, which is going to act as a scaffold material. Now this material is now if you're going to use for uh, to uh, to inject or seed the cells on top of it, the cells will penetrate into that and and it can it can revive the entire heart. Okay, so even though it pro even though it is it is a proposal, but there are certain extents of success which already been achieved. It. So you can see that uh, another one this is a, a liver organ, okay, which is, gives a hope. So no, which can effectively address the current limitations of design of complex complex organs. Okay, so this is another uh, uh, article which we captured from University of Minnesota from USA. They successfully done it. So. They took their rat heart and completely decellularized it. And of course, they, then they tried to reanimate it, reanimate or recellularization. So they tried to administer it. And of course, they also find over, over a period of time to start beating, start its beating. And what this, uh, what uh, they got a astonishing in, uh, invention or get stunned by that, when they added the cells on top of it or injected it randomly. But as you know, the heart, only the 30% of the heart is made up of myocytes. The remaining are non-myocytes. Okay, so only the myocytes are responsible for the beating of heart. But this administration, they, they, they found it interestingly, the cells penetrated and reached the spot where that beating processes happen. So it gives a hope, but uh, it gives a hope there will be possibility one part of time, there will be a complete reanimation of the, or regeneration of the complex organs. Okay, let's move on to the challenges. As I said, as we all see that it has, we have seen it can able, it has a potential to regenerate the complete organ or partial organ, and you know uh, which can replace the donor. But yet, uh, still we long way to go. As I mentioned, the first hindrance is to choose an ideal scaffold. Even though we have many, 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 there's a thousands and thousands of papers you can get it by there scaffold but each requirement of the scaffold will dip, will vary from context to context organ to organ requirement to requirement so defining a perfect or you know appropriate scaffold for the requirement or to address a particular problem still is challenging okay it's purely depends upon the biomaterial which you're going to choose it it must have all the properties so Still, it is a potential challenges, but it can be overcome. And again, some of the ethical issues are still pending, especially for you know uh, stem cell issue, stem cells incorporated in the regeneration. And of course, I said the complex organ itself a hindrance. I said, so if it is simple uh, skin regeneration, nothing simple. Take a uh, take a scaffold of uh, collagen, just growth on it. Even you could have seen it. Sometimes you, you could have read in newspapers that uh, skin. Fish skin can be used for the uh, regeneration of skin, especially for burn, burn wounds, which tremendously reduce the, uh, the scars. Okay, even though, this, uh, even though the skin regenerate, but there is a leftover scar, which gives a negative stigma for the, on the patients. So there are plenty of work is going on. Um, even there are some of the successful, um, you know, the skin tissue, skin tissue engineering, which can be done with the help of the collagen, which can effectively uh, reduce the scar formation. So in this case, you, that tissue engineering plays a significant role. So it's a hope. So one day there must be the possibility where the complete devoid of achiliosis, which is nothing but some marks, can be get rid of it. And of course, in order to achieve that, to, in order to completely, you know, as you can see, what we can see the achievements of tissue engineering. Only it's like a tip of an iceberg, but there are plenty of challenges and unsuccessful and it's just submerging under the water. But due to the understanding of a science and technology, the time or in future, it may 
it may it may not take in a few in a few years maybe it'll take a, a decade okay but certainly one day the the iceberg may flip around so that the success will be more maybe the challenges will be quite less so um i think uh with that i end my presentation i would be happy to answer your question thank you very much for patient listening over to you sir thank you sir thank you So yeah, there is a question, sir. Yeah, there is a question, sir. Yeah, please go on, sir. I will be happy. Uh, if we create one soul for these things using these 3D printing. So your voice is a bit echo, so I couldn't hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we create uh -huh. one soul for using this 3d printing if we create could you repeat sir yes, i think uh, your voice is a bit echo so yeah sir uh, the, the thing is uh -huh. he is asking uh, when you make a material uh, using 3d printing can we give uh, life to that oh yes okay that's good question of course yes of course yes so the 3d printing as you can two way as they are using it for for instance as one of my slide i mentioned about it um here so this picture you can see that this is just a prosthetic so if you have it it should be it is not a it is not a regeneration of an organ but the bioprinting which do it helps to define the uh, complex function of an organ effectively so if you develop such matter, then you need to have it permanently where it will not help you to regenerate it. But if, for instance, like this cases, or maybe I can go to the first slide, uh, which uh, maybe here, let's take this. If you if you generate like this material, which have a provision the cells to penetrate in and proliferate, then certainly yes. So it has a multi-dimensional application of 3D printing. In fact, the 3D printing is not only related to the tissue engineering, it is it is applicable all across every field. Yeah. Am I answering your question? More, I think so, sir. Yeah. And so I had a question. Please, like please. tissue engineering is something like uh, growing the lizard's tail. Is it correct? Growing? In nature, uh, lizard, lizard. Lizard. Lizard, yeah. Yes. I, I, when the tail has been cut off, automatically it will go again. Okay. It is something like that or it is different, sir? Oh, okay. So uh, that is different. That is a system itself. The When the lizard cuts its tail, that's for, that nature give, gave a provisions to divert the predator. So that is different. So the tissue, to divert the predator, so that meanwhile, that particular lizard will escape. So that is the nature provision. That is not relevant to the tissue engineering. Tissue engineering is just you're going to use your cells to regenerate the entire organ outside of your body in an in vivo or ex vivo in vivo condition or sorry in vitro condition, so that later that can be implanted back into your system. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Sir, I had a question about scaffold. Yes, please go on. So normally. Uh, in scaffold, we can't uh, make it like a mold. Okay. Uh, because if you want to make a heart shape. Yes. So there may be interior cavity should be there. Yes. So during those conditions, uh, how we are going to be make a scaffold, sir? Because the scaffold is going to be uh, having a play a main role yes. in a generation of tissues or particular organs. Yes. So a cavity like such a how it can be generated in scaffold because the tissue can grow on their own. Uh, yes. So how it is going, how will, uh, will attain a particular cavity like such as uh, when you're yes. using scaffold? Yes, that's a very good question. As I said, one of the limitations, as you can see, the scaffold, see, as you can see in this picture, can you see the pictures? Yes. Uh, so he, can you see that? The scaffolds are just a supporting material. It gives a three dimensional support. 
if you see the cells on a plate culture plate it will do it will grow only on two dimensional which is not that effective but when the tissue is always in three dimensions so you need to give a support in a three dimensional manner no matter for initial preliminary studies you can do on any shape but if you intend to develop an organ or to substitute a part of an organ then you need to define you need to define or you need to architect that scaffold in align with that so if you want to achieve that there's a first priority supposed to be on choice of biomaterial as i said one of the limitation is still we are looking for the best the best biomaterials which can address all our requirements as i said it might be have a good a uh, biocompatibility and biodegradability but poor mechanical property you know or sometimes the nature of the biopolymers uh, could could will not reflect what it is what is in vitro condition when it after implanting it may not be reflective so as i said one of the major limitation is the choice of biomaterial which is going to be the fundamental requirement for defining a scaffold or architecting the scaffold so um that's the reason we need to go for the composite material which is a combination of different polymers which every every polymers which have its own own uh, you know pros okay so the cons can be addressed by the pros of another polymer so certain combination of uh, polymers or uh, biomaterials certain ratio uh, could address it but again we haven't achieved the point at we can straight away say okay you use this combination we can we can address that issue we haven't attained the age yet so that's what the lot of research is keep going so when 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 there's a lot of information comes about the polymers especially the biomaterials then we can certainly achieve the point but at the moment it's is pure we haven't attained the stage yet thank you sir yeah so uh, have you, you have told about uh, stem cells uh, during your presentation yes please go on yes uh, stem cells is used for gene therapy or uh, for, uh, regenerative medicine yes that's a good question so the gene therapy is nothing but both are quite the gene therapy is a different different field but the gene therapy can be used for regenerative medicine you understand the point the regenerative medicine is not, it's a broad term especially to regenerate a malfunction organ either partially or fully okay if the malfunction is due to this default or, or you know default of uh, of a particular gene then it can be substituted with the uh, substituted with the uh, specific or the correct gene so it it can go and effectively replace the malfunction of faulty genes and it can replace that uh, you know the the correct gene so that it can reverse back it can reverse back the uh function of the organ so i so in the case you can you can use the uh, scaffold material for delivering for delivering the genes as well yeah it's quite interlinked especially ultimately the main is to 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 bring back to the normal position of an organ normal function of an organ yeah no thank you sir so uh, you have told about uh, 3d bioprinting yes please and uh, and also you have told about the uh, tissue engineering yes uh, both are similar or uh, if, if they are different uh, which is which ha- which is uh, having more advantages oh, okay as i said the 3d printing is a different field at all it is a different field and it, the technology is it is a, i said it is a wide application even you can see the toys not uh, forget about uh, tissue engineering you can you, you can even for you know uh, designers I, even even a uh, 2 years back or 3 years back one of the rumors is uh, come like there's uh, artificial eggs are coming the artificial rice are coming which can be generated by the 3d printing which me it is a technique which can as we all know we know the 2d printing isn't it when you give a print in a paper it will print the letters and comes it it's a 2d printing 3D printing is nothing but gives a three-dimensional pictures or t the three-dimensional object. So it is a technology is not only uh, limited to the regenerative medicine or tissue engineering. It is applicable for anywhere, even if you want to complex structure of any engineering tools. Okay, that can be used it. But we are utilizing that technology for for structuring or architecting the scaffold for the regeneration of an organ. so ultimately the involvement of the 3d printing here to develop a scaffold material 
a particular architecture, a particular shape, especially for complex organ is very, very important. OK, so that the polymers which you, the biomaterials which you're using for that, it should be most, uh, it should be palatable or it should be more convenient for molding process. At the same time, it should, when you, after that, when you sterilize that uh, scaffold and you need to seed the cells on top of it so that it should allow the cells to grow on it and permeate the cells to penetrate into it and proliferate it. So we are merging, as I said, it's an interdisciplinary field. We are utilizing the 3D, 3D technology for generation of complex, uh, you know, the complex organ scaffolds. Does it make sense? Uh, yeah, thank you, sir. Sir, I, uh, so you know you are from Tamil Nadu. Yes, please. Here we have a practice like uh, when a child has been born, uh -huh. the umbilical cord has been uh, taken out and kept in a cloth. Yes. Uh, and it has been stored for a longer period of time. Yes. Uh, so that uh, that the umbilical cord can be used for some therapy in future, sir, which has been stored uh, ten years back or twenty years back. Uh, yes. Still, it will be there in that. Uh, like uh, energy. Yeah, that. Uh, so, what is your opinion on that, sir? Oh yeah, that's. A, thank you for raising this question. Uh, even not only in India, even in Malaysia. So during any conferences, stem cell peoples, they are. Well, the, the particular company will come and give an advertisement, put up both, and they are promoting it. And in our in our clusters, there is one expertise from tissue engineering, I mean, especially in the stem cell. I ask the same questions. As you all say that it can be used it, you know, uh, if you preserve our stem cells, it can be used our, our own, own, own requirement. But in practicality, most of the disease or the organ failure, which comes, you know, after 50, isn't it? So for after 50 years, due to the age or lifestyle and other stuff. Only few people may become much a, much younger, maybe due to the accident or trauma or whatever the case is. OK, so but when you look at the viability of the stem cell, the potency of the stem cell, which has been stored. But uh, from my personal opinion, uh, for for 50 years preserving liquid nitrogen, but I'm still uh, personally, this is my personal opinion, but still I have a doubt on that if it is for 20 years. I think some of the papers they mentioned around 20, 22 years around, maybe maximum can 25, but 50 years because most of our lifestyle requirement, organ requirement may be after 50. So before 40, you know, we always be healthy and we don't have that age related ailments except the cases of, you know, some rare cases. So um, what I'm trying to say, the actual requirement of stem cells will be there majority of the time after 40 or 50 ages or so, till then after 40 years or 50 years when you revive the stem cells whether i can be able to able to address or not but still i also don't have an answer for that but if it can 20 years yes it is that's still a lot thank of you. research has to be done. this is my personal opinion yeah yes, sir. thank you sir there yeah. uh, any tissue engineered product available commercially sir so commercially, uh, not yet, from my knowledge, not yet. All a preclinical stage, um, a preclinical stage, and they have done in, uh, experiments in animals, and they are okay, but not yet for not yet for as a whole organ, not yet for humans, because as I said, the behavior of cells in in, in vitro is different. The moment when you implant it into it, as I said, our system itself is very complex. We can't predict it. Okay, if we, we can't predict what will happen, but there are certain stem cell researches was there very successful as we all know, the dolly sheep, everybody knows about it, wasn't it? So that was, uh, you know, embryonic stem cell regeneration of the entire cell of a sheep. But we heard about the positive science, but we don't know the actual outcome. Uh, you know, whether viability, for, even though we said that organ transplantation, but when you look at that organ transplantation of a, even a kidney, it's quite could be successful for a few years, but how long the complete data we have in it? Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. So
So you have been in the field of tissue engineering around five to ten years, sir. Uh, yes. So what is your opinion about that uh, commercial products? Uh, when it will it will launch? Because uh, due to the organ transportation, there are a lot of human trafficking. A lot of yeah. crimes is based on the organ transportation. Yes. So, uh, so what is your opinion regarding the tissue engineering for organ transplant? How long it will take? Sir? Okay, so that's a very good question. Even I think nobody can guess at the moment. But what we can assure that in future, certainly there will be a possibility of complete regeneration of an organ. So for that, we need to have a strong science knowledge because even a one single cell, we, we, we don't know exact 100% of every cell. Okay, there's a complex of system is, you know, the pathways, cells and behavior, how does it triggering mechanism? So it is a long way to go. Um, we, I, I think at the moment, nobody can assure when are we going to achieve the target which we can able to regenerate an, regenerate an organ. But as you can see, the publications in a preclinical studies, it gives a hope it may not be very too far away, maybe another 20 decades, I mean 20 years, maybe two decades. Maybe because now the progress happening in exponentially. So because of internet, because of technology advancement. So every part of the world, they the information what they gain is immediately shared. So now the development happens in exponentially. Maybe my assume maybe maximum of two decades could 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 completely um, could replace the you know dependency on organ. But at which is uncertain at the moment, but it can give a hope. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So nowadays, uh, there is a more focus on uh, individualized therapy, something like gene therapy. The research is widely going over towards the individualization of uh, medicine. Yes. So as a pharmacy student, uh, they have studied biotechnology or microbiology, yes. but the, and the biotechnology higher studies is not their piece of cake. Mm. Uh, so, what is your opinion? Uh, what are the scope available in the pharmaceutical biotechnology and how they can grow uh, if they choose biotechnology as a career? Your opinion and sir. Okay, so biotechnology, you mean to say, I mean, after the pharmacy or how, how, how was your question? And after the B pharma. Uh, so, <laughs> if you see that M pharma biotechnology is uh, 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 Compared to two takes or chemistry or analysis, there are less admissions nowadays. Oh, okay. People are like the prefer to join over there. Okay, okay. Because there is a competition from external also, B tech or B. So the people are selecting inform biotechnology, even though there is a wide scope of research opportunity. Okay. So just your uh, thoughts, uh, is it? Word for that. Okay, all right. That's, uh, that's a quite tricky question um, but what I try to share the current education system we no longer stick with the particular specialization as you can see even though you might be a pharmaceutics but when you look at it the work you know it will be interdisciplinary work and if you say the biotechnology Okay, so it, you may not be completely dependent on biotechnology alone. You need to have interdisciplinary knowledge and skills. So maybe your your ex field of expertise is going to talk to others, not about your background or not about your degree. So, so for instance, if you quite do a research, especially you good an opportunity, maybe you, you maybe you you would have perform in a suitics. Or maybe you know biopharmaceutical or maybe uh, pharmaceutical biotechnology. Either way, you've completed your UG. But when you go for your research, especially in abroad, I'm talking about abroad. So they don't mind about what background you're from. Okay, if we have a knowledge about it, a fundamental knowledge about it, if it even if it covered in the curriculum, and if and they can able to train you. So what they are requiring in the research field always, even for PhD or postdoctoral, post they don't mind about you need to be quite excellent in that field. The moment, the factor which you are interested to gain the knowledge 
or you thrive to understand or you know to to, to push forward yourself to understand the concept and uh, your enrollment and hardware which is going to give which is going to be the helpful or which is going to be the driving force in the next generations so um biotechnology of course has its own way of advantages whereas you will be studies a lot of uh, applications oriented and microbiology oriented okay but the thing is as i say especially for indian con india so always the investment for biotechnology is a bit of costly yeah. so, okay even when you and the students when they tr- have fixed the mind okay i want to do some biotechnology job it's very maybe it will be difficult for them to get the job related to the field where they're interested in so one limitations is there because may it will take some time for our countries where in terms of pharmaceutics especially uh is if you see no i think roughly around nearly 20000 companies are there at least some extent at least if you, even if you take 5% of the companies they need a r and d then the then there is a, a requirement of pharmaceutics but here nowadays the focus will be having bio products okay as you can see is genetic as you can see that the gene therapy gene medicine even for vaccines the good examples of vaccine so it is a very good opportunity uh, for for you know to venture into the field so it doesn't mean you need to be bio uh, biopharmaceutical technology to in order to have a vaccine but as long as if you have uh, some amount of knowledge which then of course the course could be one of the bridge for you to achieve the knowledge <coughs> apologize <coughs> so um your interest so the future every, every anyone can go any any field so they won't i'm talking about after 10 years the specialization or depends on your research interest so you can switch but ultimately if you are excellent that you can go anywhere so that's i'm not sure whether my answer your question uh, but with some extent okay, i can okay sir okay sir so thank you sir yep uh good students morning. any any questions sir good morning sir <coughs> morning uh, sir uh, any in silico study is possible for predicting the um, bio compatibility or bio degradability in tissue engineering sir <coughs> oh yeah um currently the in silico studies for release profile is a lot of there especially the release of scaffolds especially for to deliver the particular neurotransmitters or growth factors especially to differentiated factors <laughs> um and also the in, in silico studies for compositions composite materials yes there's a plenty of that so which gives an idea especially for if you want a particular strength uh, of course um <clears throat> maybe if you have Uh, you know the crystalline properties or uh, moldable properties mechanical properties yes so there are currently there's a lot of in, uh, in silico prof- studies also there this can be predict the composition of your materials so that which can abundantly reduce the time and expenditure for involving random trial method so yes it is any other questions Sir, the tissue engineering technology how the way differ from crafting technology sir okay <clears throat> so crafting is is a broad term okay so the crafting is a broad term the purpose of the crafting is to mold the shape again over the application stops there it's the molding technology or crafting technology and it may not be limited to the application oriented towards the clinical applications it can be anything maybe even uh you know for any speci- specific structures or maybe prosthesis organs maybe for if you take um any complex structures not related to the clinic okay so example i'm talking so the crafting is a broad term which uses the engineering principles and dynamics which can be useful to design and shape the architecture of a, a particular a product but here 
in the tissue engineering we use the technique to design and design and define the shape of a scaffold we using because that is going to be a base material where in which our cells is going to be seeded so those are two different fields but it has its diverse applications of crafting technique but one of the application we use that technique for molding as a 3d as a principle we are molding for developing of scaffold which is one of the important triad element of our tissue engineering does it make sense thank you sir yeah any other questions sir i think uh, we are at the end of our session sir okay thank you uh, thank you much. sir yeah thank you sir thank you for spending your valuable time with us sir so whenever you uh, whenever you are coming to india just kindly let us know sir if possible uh, we can have a session with you our students directly sir uh, because uh, knowledge transmission will help the students to grow better sir i would be happy to i would be happy to help me, help our students our young minds because uh, it's my pleasure and privilege as i mentioned during the introductory um what I have a little knowledge which i've gained through the years so it is a, in fact it is a good platform to interact the students so that they can know the knowledge what's happening in and around the globe so uh, i would be very happy and to interact with the students uh, especially if they have any any doubts or clarification or future perspectives on the research especially when they want to venture into the tissue engineering I, i'm always glad to help them so definitely sir Uh, have a nice day sir i think you you are on eid uh, festival is going on in your places so have a nice day and enjoy the celebration sir yes thank you sir thank you very much we will get you back to soon sir thank you very much have a nice day thank you sir thank stay you stay safe and stay healthy bye bye thank you sir bless you the same bye sir bye